obituary reading top stylist. I work alone. I don't believe in collaboration or inspiration. I work solely on the one inevitable fact of life. Death. There are lots of sympathetic hearts here tonight, I know, for people who shuffled off their mortal coil this year. I hope some of the people in the bar do that because they're super loud. <laughs> so my therapist is working with me on being more optim optimistic. Like I don't always have to believe things the way they are reported. Sometimes I can believe things the way they are in my head. So, David Bowie didn't die of cancer. He didn't suffer. He didn't fuck underage girls. <laughs> Bowie was just walking down the Bowery and he was like lifted off into space. Like into a space odyssey. Iman just turned and like poof. He was gone up into the universe and I think his spaceship knows which way to go. In my head. Like my therapist told me. Glenn Fry from the Eagles is he's not really dead. He's just staying at a really nice Marriott somewhere in California. He just can't leave. <laughs> he can never leave it. In, in my head. And Alan Rickman, he just didn't fucking die at all. He lives on as Hans Gruber. He just secretly fucks up things in Bruce Willis's house when Bruce Willis isn't home. It was actually the press who got it wrong. Ryan Seacrest died while fucking fitness guru Richard Simmons also died. Antonin Scalia <laughs> died in a West Texas ranch hunting baby ducklings with a flamethrower. <laughs> he was found dead dressed in a nun's garb with a dildo. <laughs> in his ass, the shape of a banana or a cactus. <laughs> he died while well, a continuous loop of David Bowie as Ziggy Stardust played on Infinite Loop on Vimeo, Vimeo, you know, in my head. So it's been a couple of years since I've been able to perform Death uh, Tap. Um, I'm older now. It's a thing, obviously, tonight. Um, <laughs> Oh God, ballet fucking thing. Um, <laughs> some of you may recall some uh, former performances. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor was a cocksucking <laughs> whore. Johnny Ramone, the only Republican I would blow. Uh, and Farrah Fawcett dies of asshole cancer. <laughs> But I've abbreviated my act this year. Oh. Abbreviated is a long word meaning shortened. <laughs> my act tonight's called Nancy Reagan Hell Cunt. for Death Tap. This may surprise you. Not so much with that pearl-wearing, anorexic, wife-stealing bobblehead, Nancy Reagan. In her own words, I believe that people would be alive today if there were a death penalty. <laughs> I 
been criticized and ridiculed for turning to astrology, but after a while, I reached the point where I didn't care. That's kind of comforting. It's well known that my husband and Lady Thatcher enjoyed a very special relationship as leaders of their respective countries during one of the most difficult and pivotal periods in modern history. They were political soulmates committed to freedom. Just say no to drugs. That was really effective in the long term, particularly in Colorado. Um, I don't intend for this discussion to take on a political tone. I'm just here for the drugs. That's out of context, but I like this. I'm against abortion. On the other hand, I believe fully in a woman's choice. That's just tricky. And facts are stupid things, but that was actually her husband. <laughs> During the Kennedy years, conservative Republicans began grooming Ronald Reagan for a political office. Nancy was then a Pacific Palisades housewife with little social standing or money. Her own film career had gone nowhere, and her husband was only doing television. So the promise of being married to a rising political star engaged her. Nancy's role model and idol was Betsy Bloomingdale. She began using Betsy's hairdressers and most importantly her gay fashion designer Jimmy Galanos, the first big member of Team Nancy. Betsy was also in with the gays and soon Nancy was seen around town on the arm of Jerry Zipkin, the man most trusted with the wives of the rich and famous. She was fiercely anti-communist, and so it followed that she had an affair with Ro Roy Cohn as well. In 1981, 234 gay men in New York and San Francisco died of a mysterious new virus. In 1982, the gay men's health crisis was started in New York City. In 1983, there were 2,300 AIDS deaths in the United States. In 1985, there were 5,636 deaths, including Nancy Reagan's good friend, Barack Hudson. In 1987, ACT UP, the militant AIDS activist group, was founded, and the band Played On was published. Liberace died, as did 21,000 Americans. And Ronald Reagan brought up the word AIDS for the first time, calling it public enemy number one. Pot calling kettle mud. <laughs> one gay writer remembers Nancy Reagan in her final years at a grocery store in California. Nancy will live on in the gay imagination as one of the great bitch goddesses. His words, not mine. Nancy Reagan read the astonishingly expensive gowns, the regal distance. But I recall seeing Nancy 20 years ago or so. I was at a Gelson supermarket in Studio City in the San Fernando Valley. I was near the entrance and I watched a limousine pull up outside. A tiny creature in a size less than zero day suit and giant sunglasses came in. I watched as Nancy looked for a mom about for a moment, as if she didn't know how this whole supermarket thing worked. <laughs> then she saw the rows of shopping carts. It took her 20 minutes to dislodge one. <laughs> But once dislodged, she raised her bony shoulder, hands grasping the cart handle, and made her way into the bright market. Well, Nancy, may you now live in that very bright market that is Hades. <laughs> and I hope you're burning there with Ronald Reagan, the demented love of your shallow, cunty life.